Everybody stand once again on your feet. The presence of the Lord is here. And David said, in his presence there's fullness of joy. So if God has done anything for you today that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you couldn't have done for yourself, find your own comfort zone and in your own way give God the praise. Come on, let me hear you, let me hear you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, bless his name, bless his name. We give you the glory, we give you the praise. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Paul said, I have learned whatsoever state I'm in therewith to be content. He didn't say he was happy. He said he learned how to be content. If you, you don't have nothing but pay less shoes, Thank God for them until you can pay more. God will bless you to pay more. Hallelujah. You may not have prime rib. You may have speckled peas and hog joes. You may not have designer shoes and designer's clothes. But if you got Kmart, you ought to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. That shouldn't be just a song we sing. We ought to thank God. The Bible says in one place, in all things give thanks. And then another place that we don't quote too often, it says, for all things, give thanks. Hallelujah. The Lord is working things out for you. Amen. So we'll get into the word. Everybody that don't have an envelope for this revival, we want you to stand. Everybody that didn't get an envelope. I see some new faces there because I know you don't have an envelope, so stand. Amen. Everybody that didn't get a revival envelope, we want you to stand. We want you to stand. If this is your first night here, you don't have an envelope. So stand. Amen. I'm not going to tell you to bring $100 now, but tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, brother, would you pass out? And anybody else didn't, just didn't feel like standing, you know you wasn't here. Great. We've been teaching most of these nights so that you won't be angry with me when I leave. Tomorrow night, I'll probably preach. <laughs> I'll, amen. We don't want nobody to say, we don't ever want him back here again. <laughs> amen. In the uh, ninth to the 13th verses of the 28th chapter, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little there a little whenever the Lord repeats himself two or three times he know you're gonna read over it not gonna pay any attention to it so he reads he says it again uh, so that you'll finally get it all right for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, hear it again because you didn't get it before. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken 
and snared and taken. In the fourth chapter of Second Timothy. First to the fourth verses, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Repeat after me. We need sound doctrine. Once again, we need sound doctrine. Once more, we need sound doctrine. Solomon in the fourth chapter of Proverbs, he was speaking to his son Rehoboam, and he writes, For I give you good doctrine, or principles to live by. God speaks to us also uh, through the wisdom writer. Doctrine is the glue that holds us together. Paul was instructing his son Timothy in the third chapter of uh, 2 Timothy. Just, just turn back a, a page or two. And uh, he told him the 15th verse. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture, how much? All. all scripture, even the names that you can't understand. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Doctrine is what is right. Reproof is what is not right. Correction is how to make it right. Instruction is how to keep it right. And that's, that, that's what sound doctrine is all about. Uh, a, a church that fails to build on a strong Bible-based set of beliefs will be as weak as that doctrine is. Uh, those who, who grew up in homes that had strict rules, that was mom and daddy's doctrine. Mom and daddy told us, Respect grown-ups. Is that right? Say yes, sir. No, ma'am. Thank you. Excuse me. I mean, kids just run right over and just knock you down. Their mother sitting right over there won't even say a word. They, they don't have no doctrine. Simple doctrine. If we start training in the high chair, we might deter the electric chair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. I don't care what Spock or Oprah or none of the others say, you better whoop your children when they need it. And now, you don't need to beat them when you're angry. Now, now if you're angry, I'm talking about what you're going to knock out of them. You, you, you shouldn't hit them then. You should have waited until you cool off. I bought you here and I'll take you out of here. No, that's the wrong time to whoop them. But you sure ought to whoop them because the Bible say whoop them. Oh, yeah, you ain't going to kill them. Not if you ain't mad. Now, if you're mad, you might hurt them pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> parents ought to know that your children will follow your example rather than your advice. They, they pay attention to what you do. 
you shouldn't be running folk down at home, period. But show sure up, not in front of your children. You shouldn't be telling other folks business in front of your children. Amen. When they, when they get here, they won't have no respect for the one you running down. And you may be wrong. Solomon advised his son, forsake not God's doctrine or law. He reflected on the words of his father David in the fourth chapter of Proverbs. You've turned to it. Fourth chapter of Proverbs. Fourth verse to the seventh verse, it says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But don't just get a whole lot of stuff in your head and don't get no understanding. And all I get in, get an understanding. You ought to understand what the Lord is saying. If we keep God's law, we will live. The entire 119th Psalms contain the statutes, the law, the doctrine, the rules, and regulation that God has set before us. David sang in, the, in verse 33 of the 119th Psalm, Teach me, O Lord. The way of thy statutes. And I shall keep it until the end. If the Lord teach you, you'll be kept. When our hearts are convicted concerning doctrine, God gives us direction. Established doctrine creates the path upon which we walk. I try to establish uh, my doctrine in my preaching, and I'm sure Bishop Smith and all the pastors do the same, giving a direction to those that are in my charge because I'm responsible for them. Doctrine includes association. If you're running with a whole lot of weak folk that ain't about nothing, pretty soon you're going to be just like them. You need to disassociate yourself from folk that don't want to pray, read the word, don't want to come to church. You need to change your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Those that don't care anything about the authority of the Bible, the necessity of soul winning, the blessing in giving, no option in tithing, God's command that we be faithful to serve and led by the Holy Spirit. That's why we come here. We don't come here to look at each other. We don't come here to fashion plate and to show off. We come here to glorify God. Worship includes the preaching and the teaching of the Holy Bible that when believed and acted upon, those who are estranged and out of fellowship with God will be saved. Our teaching emphasis centers upon the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, resurrection, and imminent return. Really, that's the gospel in a nutshell. We could say that and sit down if you believe it. But we have to go another 45 minutes so you can get the message. But that's really what the gospel is all about. We teach the baptism of the Holy Ghost is given to believers and will endue them with power from on high. Every member is encouraged to be a witness by testimony and example. The ministry is supported by our tithes, offering, and sacrificial giving. We give of our time, talents, gifts, and resources. We concern ourselves with giving aid, comfort to the poor, the aged, the homeless, and the hopeless. But the church is not a welfare station. They're not obligated to pay your rent. They're not obligated to make loans to members. The church does that, but they are not in the business of loaning money. No, no, they should feed the hungry, feed the naked, but you shouldn't be hungry all the time. 
These objectives, yeah, every other month you're hungry. These objectives are brought about through the various auxiliaries organized in the greater holy temple church of God in Christ. And I think I told you the other night, every member ought to be a part of something. Yeah. Amen. I think we got, we have almost 50 different groups at Greater Holy Temple. It includes the greeters. That's people that just wave at folk. You ought to be a part of something. Amen. <laughs> and just be, I'm, I'm going to be a member of the waivers. <laughs> we used to blow kisses across the room. Amen. So you ought to be a part. So many are criticizing doctrine and interpreting the words for themselves in their own little groups. And their spiritual lives are as weak as water. Yeah. Yeah. Solomon tells his son to follow my advice and you will walk straight. Yeah. When thou runnest, thou wilt not stumble. Yeah. Instruction is your life. Yeah. His father had told him earlier, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Right. Be not envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut off. Don't worry about other folk. Don't worry about folk that's talking about you. They talk because they got a mouth to talk. Now let's, let's turn to the fourth chapter of Proverbs again. Thirteenth verse. It says, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Now pay attention. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Don't run with certain folk. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it any way you can get away from it. Get away from them. Why? Because they don't sleep. Unless they've caused someone to do mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause somebody to fall. Folks don't sleep unless they got your goat. There are folks that dream how to upset you. Ed, you just read it. The wicked don't sleep unless they cause somebody to get mad or get upset. They dream about it. Now if I say this, she's supposed to say this. And when she say this, I'm going to say that. And when she say that, I'm going to knock her down. They got it all figured out. They don't sleep. The only way they can sleep is figure out how they can talk about you, dig a ditch for you, put your name on the sign purse, tell some lie on you, assuming things about you that's not true. And if true, it's none of their business. Instructions say, get away from them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, that sleep is taken away from them. And the Bible is right, you better pay attention to them. There are those who resent instruction. When Israel split, the northern leaders wanting to disassociate themselves from their own relatives, they said, we don't have to go all the way to Jerusalem uh, uh, to worship. Like, we don't have no sense us going from Dan to Jerusalem. Let's build our own altar up here. God didn't tell them to build no altar in Dan. He said, you go up to Zion. Go up to Jerusalem. And you got folk, you got folk belong here, belong here. Go somewhere else because it's closer. Go somewhere else to worship because they're teaching something else. Yeah. You ought to go where you're being fed. Amen. As they're warned of God's doom if they ignored God's doctrine. The people as well as the priests were idolaters. They were drunks and filled with pride. I don't mean drunk in the spirit too. I mean they were drunks. Oh, yeah, yeah. uh, here it is. Here it is. Just read the 7th and 8th verse. But they also have erred through wine. It didn't say wine, it didn't say Kool-Aid, set them up. It said through wine. And through strong drink, since you didn't understand wine, because I, I heard a little laugh over here. Through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. Absolute vodka, Chevy's, Regal, Gordon's, Gin. Wild turkey, Cabasse, Martel, Strong Drink, Johnny Red, Johnny Black, 
Crown Royal, I.W. Hopper, I don't know what they name me another one. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strength. In other words, they, 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 they're off. I mean, they're just drunk. Too strong drink. They err in vision. They can't see the Lord. They can't see you because they're drunk. And they stumble in judgment. They talk things. They don't bit more know what they're talking about than nothing. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness. They drink, throw up, and drink some more. So that there is no place clean. They sleep in their own vomit. They said he's talking to us like school children. Keep repeating themselves. They regarded the prophet's message as incoherent. Bits of information here and there that they didn't fully understand. Uh, verse 9 and 10 again. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that we ain't no little babies weaned from the breast. We grown folk. Precept upon precept saying the same thing over and over again. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. We, we know better than that. Repetition annoyed them. Just as rules and regulations annoy us. We don't like to be told what we can and cannot do. But I heard the Lord say, you're not your own. You're bought with the price. Jesus himself did not do anything of him own. He said, I do nothing unless my father tells me. I go nowhere unless my father tells me. I do nothing of myself. God's wrath, you better take heed or be destroyed. Then he gives a prophecy of Jesus Christ about the tried stone, the precious stone, the stone that the builders rejected. In spite of the alliance with the enemy, God's word still stands. 16 verse said, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. You won't have to worry. You don't have to stumble. Jesus told through Paul that if anybody come with any other doctrine and land on any other foundation except the foundation of Jesus Christ, pay no attention to it. I told you God has given Jesus a name above every name. And God gave him that name. He highly exalted him. I, I said, and you got quiet. God don't save nobody. His son saves. Yeah. God has no flesh. God is a spirit. Yeah. But Jesus put on flesh. Yeah. Suffered and died. Lived just like us. Walked around just like us. Yeah. Yeah. Folks didn't want to believe it. If you look at the one next to you now and say, are you the Messiah? You say, they look at you like you're crazy. But Jesus was just like you. And they didn't want to believe he was the Messiah, but he was. Put on flesh and blood, came here just like us, died and gave up his life. And God, because he was faithful all the way to the death of the cross and did the mission that he left heaven from, said, Lord, I come in the volume of the book as it's written of me to do thy will, O God. And he did the Lord's will and God highly exalted him and gave him that name above every name. And that name is Jesus. He is the Christ, but his name is Jesus. Jesus only focused right that far. His name is Jesus. And those that may not believe it, one day you're going to have to bow your rusty knees down and say he is the Lord. Because he say every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess and say, I give, you are the Christ. But it may be too late if you have not accepted him. You have to accept Sound doctrine. Jesus is the Lord. And he ought to be the Lord of your life. And if he's the Lord, that means you serve him. And what he says to do, you ought to do. All through the Proverbs, we read the words, Hear instruction. 
in Revelations, he said to all the churches, he that hath an ear to hear, not just listening, y'all listening at me, but I can't guarantee that you're hearing. He that hath an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, let him hear. And if you listen, you will be an overcomer. And blessed are those that overcome. And if you got Christ in your life, he said, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. In other words, be happy. And it's a good time to praise him right here. Thank you, Jesus. We must hear and heed. Proverbs 21 and 2 said, Every man is right in his own eyes. Yeah. Said in another place, There is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. Every man is right in his own eyes. That's why David told the Lord, Lord, you search me. Because if I search myself, I'm going to grade my own paper. I might even erase some marks and put another one down. Say, Lord, Lord, you search me. And if you find anything, any wicked thing that be there, you move it. Joe May sang the song, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Turn the light, the searchlight of your word from heaven on my soul. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out. And straighten me. Why? Because I want to be right. I want to be safe, saved, and I want to be whole. Yes. The word reveals you to yourself. Yes, you see yourself in the mirror of God's word. And there's nothing for you to get all mad about if you find why you're not up to it. And, and I was talking the other night. You deal with the fruit of the spirit. Yes. You find where your imperfection is. It, and all of us is short on something. You say love, joy, peace, long suffering, temperance, gentleness. Somewhere down the line, you miss it. Amen. I'm short on patience. Yeah. I know where I have. I, I have. I can't wait for folk. I blow the horn once. You better be coming. <laughs> now, that's that's my wife. Anybody else? That's why I bought our car. Go get in your car. Well, I, I, may, I may be somewhat in, more impatient than I should be. So I need to work on patience. If I ask you to do something twice, I ain't asking you no more. I do it myself. And, and, and if those folks that you can't stand, you, you don't love them. So you need, Lord, help me to love. Folk that got short answers. Snap folks up. What? That's not gentle. So you go right down the line with the fruit of the Spirit and you'll find that you're not up to all of them. So ain't no sense getting upset that you ought to know what to work on. When on your fast day, Lord, Lord, I'm working on my faith. Lord, I'm working on my love. I'm working on my temper. Working on my hard head. The Lord pondereth the heart. You don't receive God's direction from how-to books. Paul said, study. And we quote that scripture, study, show yourself approved unto God, a workman and see not be ashamed, rightly divide. And we think that's arguing in Sunday school and YPWW trying to prove how much you know and how much you just heard from Kenneth Hagin. <laughs> Just heard it and you come here like you's an authority on, on the rapture. It says study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not make us ashamed as you mess up God's word. God, you got to write the divine. You got to interpret it right. You don't go memorize a whole lot of scriptures to let folks think how much Bible you know and ain't doing none of them. Uh, no, don't, don't try to impress me. Amen. Do you do what you know? He continued, the time is coming. When preachers were preached to deaf ears, 
members who will ignore sound doctrine. Yeah. Uh, everything I've said so far tonight has been out of the Bible. Yeah. Now, if you shrug your shoulders and say, I don't believe that, well, you don't believe the Bible. They will look for teachers who will tell them, tell what their itching ears want to hear. And, and, and people are, are, are disassociating themselves from the preaching of the gospel. Nothing wrong with teaching. They need to be taught. But people were saved through the preaching of the gospel. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody going to come up here getting saved just because you talk about shacking and he just left his woman. And told her he'd be back at three. And you just spent a whole half hour talking about shock. You tell him what Jesus would do. And then when he really gets him on the inside, he'll know that he's going to have to move or do something. Move in the basement or move next door. You're going to have to get out of that room. I know that. I know. <laughs> Even if the Lord fill him with the Holy Ghost, you better get out of that room. Because eh? ain't nobody going to believe there ain't nothing happening. <laughs> I don't know. I hope I ain't hitting nobody on that one tonight. No, no, you gonna have to get out of that. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Holy Ghost to take a back seat when flesh rise, and these Negroes sleepwalk nowadays. <laughs> So they want to hear a whole life. When, when Jesus came out of the wilderness preaching the gospel. And he preached the gospel in order to win and to gain his disciples. And, and we, we got folks that go into every Bible conference that come up. And everybody got a Bible conference now. Everybody got one. Crusades, healing service, prosperity plan, blessing plan. Praise and worship seminars yeah. in English, Hebrew, and Greek. Yeah. And they, they're using praise like a Uzi, like it's going to shoot your troubles away. Yeah. Oh, just praise them and everything will be all right. If you broke and hungry and ain't got no job, you can sit in your room all day long. You ain't going to get no job. <laughs> you better get your rusty stuff out the bed and go get a job. And then praise the Lord for the job. The Lord just praise your way. I, I, it's true you can praise your way into deliverance. You can praise your way into victory. But there ain't no automatic panacea for you to get out of trouble. You got to put some faith behind it. And work. And then praise God. Going, everybody just praise and worship. I, I mean, we've been doing it all the time. We just didn't know what it was. Because 40 years ago, if we had talked about what's in the Greek and Hebrew, they said, Lucia, Satan, come on out of here. You devil, you, you, devil you with that false doctrine. Yeah, but we've been y'all down in Shabbat and, and, and Hallel. I mean, every kind of, every kind of nest out there in the world, saints have done it. I mean, they've been doing the Watusa, the hula hoop, the boogie woogie, the cabbage pack, the slide. They've been doing all of that. And some of them doing it now, really. <laughs> and they ain't doing it in the spirit. They just, they're just doing what they do. <laughs> I don't bother y'all. But when you switch to follow peace with all oh, men, they get just as quiet. And they become bored, just like Israel. Uh, how many times he going to quote that scripture? Saints of old quoted it in every service. Follow peace with all men, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It's holiness or hell in every service in the church of God in Christ. Somebody said. I love the praise and worship song. I enjoyed that song my brother sang tonight. Uh, but, but let's not discard, I made a vow to the Lord. Uh, let's not do away with traveling shoes, Lord. Been saved all day, no evil have I done. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Have you tried these? Don't do away with them. Because our young folks don't know what we're singing. Most musicians cannot play a simple, Jesus paid it all, him. 
They playing Thomas Whitfield chords on just plain, simple, four, four time in the key of C hymn. And look at you just as crazy as I found a friend with a... I know that. But all you gotta do, I found a friend who is all... Oh, that, they, they get that right away. Amazing Grace is over 200 years old and you can't find a more profound song than Amazing Grace. And I don't want to hear nobody say, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Say it right back to me. I want the Lord, but now I'm out. I'm now I say, I don't want to hear him mess up that song. Thank you, Jesus. again. Can't he find another scripture? My folks, they, they, they draw up whenever I, I, I quote, forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some is. And they look at me like, here we go again. Well, it's the same commandment like thou shalt not steal. Lord said, go to church. Whenever he went into a city, why did you find the Lord? In church. It was his custom. He made a habit of going to church. Oh yeah, he said, forsake not, don't be staying home. I can praise God at home just like, no, no, you cannot. The praise is in the assembling of the saints. You don't know what you miss when you're not at church. You start talking about habits and lust and immorality and unfaithfulness and sin in general. Folk don't want to hear it. They want you to talk about he's, he'll supply my needs. He'll heal my body. He'll make a way out of no way. Yeah, they, want to hear, they want to hear that, but they don't want to hear nothing about uh, don't sin. So y'all listen to John in 2 John, the 8th verse. 2 John ain't but one chapter. <laughs> Just second job. <laughs> Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, what does it say here? Hath not God, you're not saved. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. And if that come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speak. That don't mean be rude to him, but you don't have to say now nah, amen to somebody telling a joke or a lie. You don't have to say amen to anything that's not the truth. I don't care how much they holler. Can't y'all say amen? Just look at them. The pulpit is not, not a place. I say some funny things, but I'm just as serious as I can be. Preacher shouldn't be talking about two little pigs was walking down the road, and one little pig said, to her, you're lying already because pigs don't walk down the road talking to each other. Monkey took the buzzer for a ride in the air. The buzzer thought that everything was on the square. You know that ain't true. And you said, say amen. Don't say amen to no jokes. Joke is cousin to lie. And the Bible said, put away jesting. There's nothing wrong with being humorous and smiling sometimes, but you be careful that you ain't lying when you're telling a funny story. 
Knowing doctrine is not enough. You must obey or do what you know is right. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 19, said to Peter and Andrew, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. After he got his 12-man church together, he sat them down and taught them, saying, after you come to Christ, you need to be taught. And he sat them down. We told you last night the Beatitudes of the 5th through the 7th chapter of Matthew. So here's a few verses. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's the kingdom of heaven. If you want to be happy, you, this is what you got to do. Happy are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger, thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, not breakers, makers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which be... And if you want to be happy, do these things. Yeah. This is his doctrine. And I, we, tell, we tell him at Greater Holy Temple, if it's in red print, it's no argument. You don't have nothing to say about it if it's in red print. Jesus said it and he meant just what he said. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute, say all manner of evil against you falsely. Make sure it's a lie yeah. for my sake and make sure it's for the cause of Christ. Right. Not just lying on you for something else. If it has to do with your hope in Christ, you're going to be blessed if you hold your peace. Yeah. If they're lying on you and you know it's not true, you ought to just go off praising God. Yeah. I mean, they call you a nappy head, bald faced jip. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Y'all looking at me like, uh -huh, I wish they would call me a jip. But, but, but the Lord say rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And that's why you need sound doctrine. <laughs> you need salvation. Well, as he ended his seminar in the seventh chapter of St. Matthew, he tells us, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. They know all the moves. They know all the cliches. They know every blessing plan scripture in the Bible. And you have a need and you fall for it. You can read it yourself and get the same blessing. And keep your two hundred dollars, and just give it Sunday in the regular offering. But inwardly they are ravening wolves, and they are wolves coming to devour you. All right, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes, thorns, or figs, or thistles? Uh, you can know them. I don't care how much they promise. Go by what comes true that they promise. The next Tuesday night, Friday night, you don't hear very many testimonies of victory. No. After these great, magnificent revivals where you done gave all your money, then fell for every line, and you give your last, and give your last. And he tells some story about the lady that gave her last. And so I told you that was her income tax check. <laughs> she was getting that back anyway. Y'all getting quiet. I mean, if you've been doing it, stop doing it. Now, there's nothing wrong with giving. There's nothing wrong with giving. The Lord does lead to give. Because if you leave it up to you, you give the same old dollar. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with, with giving a suggestion. I, I, we asked you for $100. But I'm just promising you the blessing of the Lord. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Good fruit cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by thy fruits ye shall know them. Yeah. And some of them you should follow them home. Yeah. Yeah, or, or call home while they're here. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, you, you'll find that they're not. One preacher, one preacher was saying, I have a 19 room home. That's a pretty north. Ross from California. He ain't been here a long time. One day he lived in the projects. He had more than 19 rooms. <laughs> 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 
it had about two or three hundred rooms. Just like today, when sound doctrine is taught in that in that twenty eighth verse of Matthew, it came to pass when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He taught them. Folks today, they act as if they haven't heard. Preacher preach something this Sunday and somebody come and dress it up next week and you act as if you ain't never heard it before in all your life. Ain't nothing new under the sun. I don't come here to preach nothing new. I'm confirming what your pastor have already said. Mark 4, he taught the multitudes in parables, but he still imparted his doctrine about the seed, which is the word and the result, if it falls on good ground. In the seventh chapter of John, his own brothers didn't believe him. Jews marveled at his authority. And in the 17th chapter of John, the 16th and 17th verses, and we're coming to end, because y'all getting tired of all this reading yet. <laughs> I feel you. I feel, I see home on some of y'all's faces. <laughs> yeah. Jesus answered them, 16 verse 7 chapter. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man, who? This is in red print. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. When anybody comes in your midst preaching anything contrary, your spirit ought to catch up. Yeah. Your spirit ought to detect something wrong with that. Yeah. That, that just don't sound right. Yeah. Oh. 32nd verse, the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. Pharisees, the chief priests, sent office to, to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. Where I am thither, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles, teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this? That he said, ye shall seek me, shall not find me. Where I am thither, ye cannot come. 37th verse, in the last day, that great day of the feast, yeah. Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, yeah. let him come unto me and drink. Yeah. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly, shall flow, what? Rivers of living water. He spake of the Holy Ghost. And many of the people, therefore, when they heard of this saying, said of a truth, this is a prophet. When he left here a few days later, in the second chapter of Acts, they were all in one place. They were all with one accord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And suddenly, there came a sound out of heaven like a rushing of a mighty wind. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. They were all there together. In the 38th verse, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Thank you, Jesus. And with many words, he exhorted them. 43rd verse, fear came upon every soul. 
many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Thank you, Jesus. And 46 verse said, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And what were they doing? They were praising God. They were praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Bible said, and the Lord added to the church name, such that would be saved. Thank you, Jesus. When you get on and with one accord, and everyone has the same agenda, giving glory and honor to God, God will be in the midst. And whatever you need, God's got it. Whatever you want from the Lord, God will give it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sound doctrine. If you put your trust in Jesus, everything will be all right. He will make your yoke wear easy and your burdens, it will be light. If you trust him, he'll bring you out. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God's word is true. God's word will stand forever. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you pray, God will answer your prayer. Whatever you need, God's got it. If you trust him, he'll give it to you. How do I know? I tried it. Stand on your feet. I found him to be all right. One day I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest said lay down thy weary one lie down thy head upon my breast so I came to Jesus just as I was I didn't have time to clean up I didn't have time to straighten up just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bid me come to thee O Lamb of God I come I came just as I was because I was ready to be saved. Because I was on my way to hell in the church. Directing the choir. Trying to play the piano. Pastor son, folk just took for granted I was saved. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to get out of church. But I came to myself. When the Lord said one day you're going to call me and I'm going to laugh at your calamity. So I cried and I cried. I cried all night long. I cried and I cried until I found the Lord. I recognize and understand the song the hymn writer wrote. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. I was sinking to ride no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now safe and saved am I. It was love that lifted me. When nothing else would help, love lifted me. I'm so glad he did not come down. He stayed there, went down in the grave, stayed there three long days, got up on the third day, said, oh, power, I've got power to save, power to heal, power to deliver, and that same power is prevalent today. Jesus saved.